My name is Michael Rick, and I'll be teaching you a course in data structures and algorithmic analysis. This course will introduce several useful data structures along with the design and analysis of related algorithms. It will prepare you to tackle a wide variety of emerging software needs, both for applications and for systems. With some serious effort on your part, the course really should give you a very strong foundation for a successful career in software development. As a starting point, and although there'll be some quick review on these subjects, uh, you, you as a student are assumed to already have some familiarity with certain basic, what I'll call basic, data structures and algorithms. The data structures that you should already have come in contact with and, and, and used to some degree are arrays, linked lists, FIFO queues, stack, binary search trees, and hash tables. The algorithms that we're assuming uh, you already understand and have worked with to some degree are sequential search, binary search, selection sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, and merge sort. So please take a look at the lists of algorithms as well as the list of data structures here. And if there's anything that you're not familiar with, um, you need to take a little time out and, and study up on that. Okay, here are the topics that this course will cover in depth. Complexity analysis and NP completeness, heaps, heap sort, and quick sort, red black trees, which are basically a variation of binary search trees, dynamic programming, greedy algorithms, certain graph algorithms, and string matching algorithms. All right, so now besides teaching you, you know, several new algorithms that, that you don't know yet um, and, and data structures and, and and, um, and, and seeing a wide range of applications for these. Um, it's just as important in this course that we learn how to analyze such algorithms in terms of their efficiencies. Okay, so what we're basically saying here is we want to come to a pretty good understanding of what to expect in terms of the length of time it takes for an algorithm to complete its mission um, depending on the size of the input you, you feed it. All right, so in a previous course, you should have gotten your feet wet with some of this business of time complexity, or in other words, how long it takes for an algorithm to complete. Um, and you, you should have had some introduction to the so-called big O notation, uh, and certain basic examples of this are as follows. We say that sequential search requires big O of n time. And we also say that that's linear time. We say that binary search requires big O log n time. Insertion sort requires big O n squared time, or in other words, quadratic time. And merge sort requires big O n log n time. And if, if these facts are not completely clear to you and you're feeling, well, yeah, I've seen the big O notation, but I don't really get it. Um, well, that's, that's precisely what this course is largely about, is making sure that you come to terms with just exactly what that notation and other notion and concepts are really trying to communicate. Uh, let's jump right into this and, and check and see if perhaps you already do have a pretty good intuitive sense of what these things are saying, at least. Um, so 
as a pretty straightforward example, suppose you've written a program that does insertion sort, and you've also written a program that does merge sort, and it just so happens that insertion sort can sort a list of n things in a time 10 times n squared microseconds. But merge sort requires 1,000 times n times log to the base 10 of n microseconds. Okay, so maybe those formulas seem um, complicated to you or whatnot, but uh, let's play with them and see what happens. So here we're just reviewing the bidding. Um, so here's a question. Suppose we run these two programs and, and ask each of them to sort a list of size 10. Okay, how long is it going to take insertion sort to sort 10 things versus how long is it going to take merge sort to sort 10 things? Well, if you plug 10 in for n in the top formula, it's going to be 10 times 10 squared, so 10 times 100, which is 1,000. Now, 1,000 microseconds is the same thing as 1 millisecond. Okay, so we would know that insertion sort takes a millisecond to sort 10 things. All right, so now what if we plug n equals 10 in for, uh, plug 10 in for n into the merge sort formula? Well, then we get 1,000 times n times log to the base 10 of n. We get 1,000 times 10 times 1. 1,000 times 10 times 1 is equal to 10,000. So that is, what, 10 milliseconds. So we just discovered that insertion sort is going to take a millisecond, while merge sort is going to take 10 milliseconds. So it's very clear that for this small input, n equals 10, insertion sort is a lot faster than merge sort by a factor of 10. But the interesting thing is what's going to happen is the list size n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's up the ante and, and try to move a little quicker through this. What happens when n equals 100? All right, we'll plug it in, turn the crank, and you discover that insertion sort takes 100 milliseconds, while merge sort takes 200 milliseconds. So again, insertion sort wins. It's faster, but this time it's only faster by a factor of two. It's basically losing its lead already. And if you then up n to 1,000, increase n to 1,000, well, then you'll, you'll quickly see that there's a turnaround here because insertion sort now takes 10 seconds while merge sort only takes 3 seconds. So we've crossed over and suddenly merge sort is beating insertion sort. And to really hammer them, what happens if we try to sort a million things? Uh -huh. With n equal to a million, it turns out that insertion sort takes 10 megaseconds while merge sort only requires 4 kiloseconds. Okay, so 10 megaseconds is 10 million seconds, whereas 4 kiloseconds, that's 4,000 seconds. Um, obviously, merge sort is going a lot faster uh, than insertion sort. And um, I pulled out a calculator and discovered that uh, that, that 10 megaseconds is approximately four months, four kiloseconds is approximately an hour. So merge sort is doing in one hour what insertion sort is taking four months to do. So there it is. Now, once again, um, this phrase time complexity, it just refers to this business of analyzing algorithms to try to determine how long they're going to take uh, based on or as, as a function of the uh, size of the input that you feed the algorithm. Okay? Um, and we can't hide from the fact that this requires very careful mathematical analysis, which in turn requires uh, a fair amount of mathematical notation and, and this, of course, necessitates understanding precisely what the notation means.